Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models, my name is Bobby Waldron and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a company called Sharpen Air. Um, just to just show you, here is um, their car just here, it's a company called Sharpen Air and that's at sharpenair.com and what this company is all about is they've invented a new little tool for us modelers and that is a tool in which to um, sharpen and repair our airbrush needles um, because the problem you might have in the past and especially anyone who is new to airbrushing what you'll probably find is you're going to sort of start bending your needles a little bit I mean even as experienced and more professional airbrushers you know we still even um, you know bend our needles I mean maybe not so often as when you're a, a, a beginner but still you know those needles they get bent and when they get bent um, it just changes the flow of our paint that flows over the needle and it can just send it off in all sorts of sort of angles and spluttering and just give you a load of problems uh, um, airbrushing so you could go off and you could spend maybe about 20 pounds ish buying a brand new needle because these things they are not cheap to go out and buy um, so that's um, where this sharpen air tool comes into place um, it's just nicely designed to get rid of um, um, those bends in the needle and to even polish the needle as well um, because when it comes to um, spraying the needle is very important because it's uh, try and think about aerodynamics right if you've got a very rough needle and you're blasting paint over that needle um, it's not going to flow across that needle as well as if that needle was all nice and smooth as a baby's bottom just flows right over it um, when it's rough as well it can build up um, with the paint and then that paint sort of dries on the needle a little bit quicker than normal and you get dry needles and stuff so um, also good to, to polish your your needles now what you do with this well first off I've actually got to go off now and break my needle right so I'm just getting a piece a, a metal ruler here Right, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to now put a, a little bend in my needle just here. And there's just, I think I've just put a little one on there. And just to sort of show you, I have set up the macro camera just here. So we'll just put the macro lens on. Right, and then I'm just going to sort of zoom you in and show you what we've just done to this needle there's like a little should be it does need a little bit of time to focus with uh, the macro lens so hopefully you can just see just on the tip of that needle there there's just a little tiny tiny bend on there um, now I wish I sort of um, went out and brought a proper sort of macro lens for this and you would have saw that a hell of a lot better but we don't have that um, at the moment uh, but you can just see that there's just a little bend just on the end of the needle and that tiny little bend is just enough to mess up your spray pattern so um, with this tool you have uh, four holes just inside of here and basically um, what we do is um, we place the needle just inside here and we basically sand it so what we're going to do right is we're going to take our first hole right and we're going to fed this through and sorry about the focusing on this camera it's not set up quite for there we go maybe that's going to be a bit better basically you fed it through in just until 
you feel a little bit of resistance and I've just felt that there you don't want to be um, going too far with this okay um, if you push down too much and then you start spinning what you can do is end up damaging the needle even more this is really a very light process so I've just touched you can just feel how it's just touched those two um, sanding stones in there and what you want to do is just start to spin right but as you're spinning you want to sort of do a couple of spins and then pull back out and then pull back in spin a bit more pull back out push back in spin a bit more pull back out and the whole point is is what you don't want is because there's two stones in there you know in a sort of curve like this and if you push the needle in and then spin it it can sort of get a bit lodged in those two stones that's why do about 10 turns pull it out and then go for it again right and now the first sanding stone this one this one's just designed to sort of you know uh, it's, it's more of a higher grit right and then as we move into the second one it's gonna be um, you know, a much more sort of get starting to polish it up and you know you know how we do in modeling you start off with a um, a low sanding grit to really sort of sand away at it and you go up the grits until you get to like a polishing bit and you just smooth it out real sort of nice right now you might have to do this for maybe a couple of minutes right when you're spinning um, you want to be doing it as again as I say you've got to be you've got to be light with this you've almost got to be sort of spinning it in a sense that you almost feel like you're not doing anything but you are actually doing something because you saw how tiny that that bend was on the end of the needle that's all we're trying to work on here so we, we are just you know it's got to be so soft right and then once you feel like you're happy maybe you can just have a, a quick look at the needle and feel it another little tip just in case you can't quite see it you can get a kitchen paper towel and if you run your needle across the kitchen paper towel and then look at your needle you might be able to see little fibers and hairs just on the end of the needle and that will indicate that your need to, needle is still bent but we're looking good actually at the moment we then want to sort of go into the second one right and this one uh, is just going to start polishing up right because the first one is repaired and uh, it's probably left some minor slight little sanding scratches so you want to work your way now down into the second one remember push in twist push out push in twist push out and we just keep on doing that right so now I'm just going to have a little look at this and that is maybe a tiny bit more. I can just feel on the end of my finger just a slight little something there. So hopefully you can see there now we haven't got any sort of nasty kinks in it. Sorry about the focusing. It's you know when we go into macro mode like this it is a little bit hard but hopefully you can just see on the end of the tip we haven't got any sort of um, nasty bends in there so the tool has basically done the job we want it to do it's now repaired our needle however there is another stage to this we could go off and we could sort of work our way through let's just get this right take this off we could start working our way through these second two um you don't really sort of need that i mean maybe if it's sort of kind of really sort of damaged you know we could go through these two stages um, but that's sort of optional the next thing that you may want to do and i do recommend if i can just find it is to get out um, a drill and every man should have one of these so you should have one and what we're going to do we're going to actually um, place our needle into our drill and get it make sure it's sort of nice and straight as possible right so it's not sort of going like this right so just check on that then what also you can get you can get these from sharpen 
air and basically these are sort of like polishing pads um, what you can also go off and do um, I would sort of recommend is we've also got Tamiya's polishing compound just here and what we can do we can get out some of this polishing compound right we can get our needle maybe just get a bit of this on the end of the needle you don't need a lot hopefully you can see that little white dot there right and then what we're going to do is we're going to spin this on our polish uh, our little polishing um, pad just here So there we go, that is basically all done. Now what you will notice immediately is if you feel this needle, uh, it, it does come very apparent, you know, how smooth that absolutely feels. It, it really does. I am seeing a difference and feeling a difference in that. Let's get that off there and maybe do another quick macro. So hopefully you're sort of seeing the difference there. That I hope you can sort of tell how that does look. That little bit sharper, pointier, and, and even smoother in a lot of cases. Uh, and, and that is exactly what you want that tool to do. Now this tool is around about $60. Now I can't remember if that was actually 60 US or 60 Canadian dollars. Um, but although the price might seem a little bit on the high side, again, you know, going out and actually buying a replacement needle for say something like an Evolution or a water, you know, you, you could be talking like 20, 30 pounds, that kind of mark. So, you know, it's not cheap to replace them. So, you know, once you have brought this, I mean, you literally could almost go, the needles that you've got now, you could keep them for life because you can repair them. So any sort of bends you can sort of repair. And not only that, after actually using this, I would actually recommend that um, whenever you do one of your full strip downs and clean your airbrush, to actually um, maybe not sort of get this part of the tool out. Let's focus you out. Not get this part of the tool out, but get this part where you've got these um, polishing pads and actually polish them as you saw me do at the end because it re you really can feel how it does um, feel so, so much um, smoother. And the smoother it's gonna be, the better it's gonna flow over the needle and give you a much more sharper um, spray pattern, which um, is one of the big problems with these cheap ones. Because actually, I did do a little bit of testing before I started filming this. And we have our Vida airbrush just here. Now, I picked this one specifically because some of the really cheap imports that you can get you know the ones are around about 20 pounds um, with them ones um, one of the problems with them was the needles were a little bit rough on the end which sort of made them not spray so well which is why i picked vida because they have that sort of quality on the end of the needle however when i was as i say before i started filming this i did a little test with my vida bending it um, and when I actually deliberately tried to bend this needle, um, it really bent really easily. Um, and so that's just a little note there, um, kind of just showing you how sort of the better quality you get um, with sort of like evolution, I water, that sort of thing. So yeah, I would say it's definitely a big, big thumbs up. It can save you a lot of money in the long run if you've got one of these as well um, and it I, I just like how it also sort of um, shall we say keeps your needles nice and polished and smooth uh, to keep them you know at optimal sort of um, you know spraying efficiency so to speak so yeah big thumbs up here at Genesis Models for um, sharpen airbrush uh, sorry, sharpen air at sharpenair.com. So until next time, hopefully you've enjoyed this. My name is Bobby Waldron. This is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.